Good morning, friend. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. I am going in and hanging out with some friends this evening, and I thought it would be fun to put together a little gift basket for them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make some bread dough. This dough has to sit in the refrigerator for a little bit and rest. We've got a ton of food preservation projects we need to get to. We need to do a little bit of harvesting. So I thought, let's get this bread dough going now so that when we're done with our food preservation projects, we can roll the dough out, make it, bake it. We're gonna make cinnamon pull apart dough. Now this morning, what I already did is I scalded my milk and my sugar before I got ready for the day so that it could cool down to about 110 degrees before we add our yeast. I am quadrupling this recipe because I want one loaf for each one of my friends and then Josh would be pretty sad if I made this bread and we didn't have any to enjoy. So I just added three tablespoons of active dry yeast to my milk and sugar. I'm gonna mix this together. I'm gonna let this sit for just about five minutes or so while that yeast gets activated. And my milk feels like a really good temperature. This yeast was in the fridge, so it might take about a minute or two longer to get nice and bubbly just because it's been cold from sitting in the fridge. I normally like to keep some of my yeast in my baking drawer so that it's room temperature and some in my fridge, but I didn't have any in my baking drawer this morning. So I measured out 18 cups of flour. I went ahead and went down to my bulk storage for this because I knew I was going to use all what I had up here. So I went down there and measured that out. I'm actually gonna remove two cups of that. I will link this recipe down below and we're gonna leave 16 cups in here. And to this, while I'm waiting for my yeast to activate, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of salt. Now remember, this is a lot of bread. <laughs> this is a lot of bread. And it's a sweet bread, so the salt will help act, uh, counterbalance the sweetness. So now to this, we're gonna add this after we let our dough rise one time. We are gonna be adding some baking powder and baking soda to this. So I'm just getting this ready so that when we're ready to add it, it's already measured out. So to this, I wrote on my recipe here what the quadrupled quantity is so that I wouldn't have to do the math while I was doing this. So we need two teaspoons of baking powder and two teaspoons of baking soda. I've never made this recipe before. This is one I found online. So I'm excited to give it a try. I've never made a pull apart bread before. This dough recipe seems very, it seems almost exactly the same as the dough recipe for Pioneer Woman cinnamon rolls. And we love Pioneer Women's cinnamon roll dough recipe. It's the one that I actually make for Christmas every year. I just measured out two cups of avocado oil and it looks like our yeast is ready. So to our bowl of flour, I have a well. I'm gonna add our oil and our yeast, sugar, and milk mixture. And I'm gonna get all the yeast and sugar out of this pan. And then I'm gonna mix this by hand. This is gonna be a pretty wet dough. It's almost gonna be like a batter consistency. So don't fret if it seems super wet and sticky because we still have all this flour we're gonna add. What inspired me to do this on this day is I got a new Bosch mixer. So if you watched my Week in the Life video, there was a box and I didn't open it and what it was was a Bosch mixer. And I thought that I would break it in by making this bread for my friends. But then I realized this is not a bread that needs to be kneaded in a mixer. So then I just decided to do it by hand. And I couldn't help myself, but you'll see we do end up pulling the Bosch out and we use it for the first time together. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of oil that I have left in this measuring 
cup and I'm just gonna put this on the top. You can see how sticky it is, that's totally fine. We're gonna let it rise for one hour, just like this. I'm putting the oil just so that it doesn't dry out on the top. And I wanna make sure I have it in a big bowl because this is a lot of dough. We're gonna cover this and let this rise. I was not planning on doing this today, but I figured since I'm in the kitchen making bread and I've got this new mixer out, I am going to make just some sandwich bread so that I can have this to so I just put water, yeast, so I'm going to put my sugar. I originally was only going to double the batch, but then I thought I want to kind of see how far I can push this machine and if I can get a triple batch in here. I've just heard amazing things about this. You all have told me for years that I need to get one. And so I thought, let's, since it's the first time I'm using it, let's go ahead and try tripling it. So I do end up tripling this bread recipe, which is gonna be six loaves of bread. And I guess today is mega bread making day. I was not planning on doing this on this day, making this much bread, but it ends up working out just fine. I end up being able to gift a lot of this and I end up slicing it and putting it in the freezer. It is BLT season, so none of this bread is going to go to waste. In just a minute, I say I don't think I have the dough hook attachment on this bread or on this mixer, but I do. I am just new to this. This was literally the first time I ever used it and I'm getting used to all the amazing things it can do. This might have been completely crazy, but I wanted to test the capacity of this mixer because I've only ever heard really good things about it. And I just added one more recipe's worth of dough in here. I added two more cups of water, more yeast, five and a half cups more flour. And now I'm gonna add salt because I realized I almost forgot to add salt. And if you've ever made bread before and you forget to add salt, it's tragic. So I'm gonna get this going and it all fits in here. And then I just realized I don't think, because I am new to the Bosch mixer, I don't think I have the dough attachment on here. I think I have the mixing attachment for like cookie dough. And so I am going to mix this in here as best I can. I'll take it out and I'll finish it by hand. But I have 16 and a half cups of flour in here. I have three and a fourth cups of oil. I have a cup of sugar and six cups of water and it all fits. <laughs> you all have told me for years that I need to get this machine. I just made six loaves of bread in no time at all. The only thing I didn't do is follow my freezer dough recipe because I was not planning on freezing this. I was, Orbit, please don't. I was planning on baking it right away, but, so I should have made my freezer dough bread recipe, not my just bread recipe, but that's okay. This is incredible. I gotta get a big bowl. <laughs> Look at this thing. Wow. I just tested the limits of that and that is incredible. So now what I'm gonna do is this needs to rise. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on that. We're gonna get this sandwich bread covered and then we're gonna head back to our other bread dough because there's a few more steps it needs and then we do have food preservation projects we need to get to today. I'm gonna have to get creative with how I'm gonna bake all this bread because I only have four bread pans so we're gonna have to do it in sections. So good thing this has to sit in the refrigerator for a little bit before we can bake it. So I'm gonna mix this up with the rest of the flour and then it's gonna go in the refrigerator for a couple hours and rest while it does its kind of second rise slash kind of ferment. It's gonna develop the flavor. right now 
Good thing my friends and family like bread because everyone's getting some. You know the, the old adage, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car from Oprah. Well, you get a loaf of bread, you get a loaf of bread, you get a loaf of bread. This is gonna be great. Okay, so now it says once you mix this in, it's gonna be very soft. Do, 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 do. Put it in the refrigerator for a few hours, up to 24 hours. So we're gonna get this in the fridge. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the dough that I like to make my cinnamon rolls with at Christmas time. And so one nice thing about it is you can make it up to 24 hours in advance and you can have it sit in the refrigerator and wait until you're ready to roll it out. So on this day, I wanted it to only sit in there for a few hours and then roll it out because I was planning on making the bread this day. I wanted to get it done early enough so that it had time to rest, but and I could get my other projects done and then I could bake it before I was gonna go hang out with my friends and I could bring them a warm loaf of bread. But the nice thing about the recipe is you can make it in advance, you can let it sit in the refrigerator. So for things like Christmas, when I use this dough to turn it into cinnamon rolls, then you can make it the day before and you don't have to worry about making the dough the day of you wanna make cinnamon rolls. So it's just one last step. So here I am cleaning up the kitchen because we are about to go head out into the garden and I didn't wanna come back in to a messy kitchen. So because we've got bread rising all over the place, we head out into the garden, we do a food preservation project, and we make a side for dinner. And then once all of that's done, then we can get back to the bread. But here I am out in the garden harvesting this celery. My celery has kind of been giving me troubles <laughs> this year. This looks absolutely beautiful. And I'm actually harvesting it today. And I'm gonna leave the root end of the celery in the ground and I'm hoping for at least one more harvest of celery. Celery can be a cut and come again crop so I'm going to leave those last couple inches in the ground and it'll start growing from the center and I'm hoping that I will be able to have some fresh celery into the fall. Most of this celery today that I'm going to take inside we're going to preserve for winter eating so for making things like chicken pot pie or chicken soup or stuffing at Thanksgiving, things like that. I'm gonna use the majority of the celery for. I'm gonna put some fresh in the refrigerator to eat, but I am hoping that the celery grows again and we get a little bit more fresh celery. I'm about to harvest the potatoes and I wanted, I would like some fresh celery for some potato salad. I'm also just doing a quick little harvest here. This is what I'm gonna make for a side salad with dinner tonight. I'm just gonna grab a couple cucumbers and we're gonna make a yummy salad with these. So here I am thinking, so I don't wanna save my celery greens. The, the leaves, they are totally edible. You can use them as a parsley substitute if you want. I have enough actual parsley in my garden that I don't need to worry about that. And I do have some celery leaves already preserved in my pantry for, you know, if I want to make broth or things like that with it, it's a great way to use it up. But I have enough of that currently. So I originally was just going to pick the leaves and let them compost in that bed. That was my potato bed. But then I thought, you know what, I think the chickens actually will enjoy these. So instead of just having them compost in that potato bed, I'm going to pull the celery, bring it inside, and I'm going to remove the leaves so that I can easily give the leaves to the chickens. So you could freeze dry the celery leaves, you could dehydrate them and eat them, but like I said, I just have enough of them so I don't need to do that, and the chickens will greatly enjoy them. I got the celery all prepped. I'm gonna give this to the chickens, and we're gonna blanch and deal with this in just a minute. I turned my water off because I need to deal with this bread before I do anything else, and I thought exactly what I'm gonna do with this so that it's not gonna go to waste. Well, it wouldn't go to waste, but I thought of a good plan for this. So what I'm gonna do is give it a little bit of a knead here, and I am going to cut it into thirds because I tripled this recipe. And what I'm gonna do is this bread recipe is pretty similar to my pizza dough recipe. It's not exactly the same, but it's close enough that we're gonna have pizza for dinner tonight, or not tonight, tomorrow night, so or sometime this weekend. So I just meal prepped. <laughs> Was not planning on meal prep, but I did. 
So I'm gonna cut this dough into thirds. I'm not cutting on my silicone mat, just kind of roughly cutting here. And I'm gonna pop this in the refrigerator and this weekend we will have bread. Now this recipe calls for bread flour. I don't have, I didn't have enough bread flour to triple this recipe, so I just used all-purpose flour. You can use all-purpose flour, just the crumb is not gonna be exactly the same. So just know you can use it. It's just a better if you use bread flour. So this dough is going in this reusable silicone bag. I just put some olive oil in there just to keep it from drying out. Pop this in the refrigerator. And I just meal prepped. And now we're gonna make four loaves of bread. To shape these loaves of bread, I'm gonna take each ball of dough, I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit and then I'm gonna roll it on top of itself. I will pinch the seams closed, I will tuck the ends in and I will put it seam side down in this loaf pan. I do like to put parchment paper down just so that it ensures it doesn't stick. And then I spray the top as well, just so that it doesn't dry out as it rises. So I'm gonna repeat this process for the other three loaves of bread, and then I will cover this with a damp towel and let it rise until it's properly proved, and then we can get them baked up. What I did with that dough that I put in the refrigerator, because I didn't, one, I only have four loaf pans, I don't need any more loaf pans, and I didn't want to have to kind of juggle making the other two into loaf of bread because I have enough sandwich bread, even with me gifting three of these away. I end up turning that dough into stromboli. So you can get kind of creative. You know, even though this technically is sandwich bread dough, it made a beautiful, absolutely delicious stromboli. I made a pesto one with some of the pesto we made. I put zucchinis and peppers and just yummy garden fresh produce in it, and it was absolutely delicious. I'm gonna keep some of the celery out fresh for fresh eating. I want to make some potato salad. I think in the next little bit, I'm gonna be harvesting the potatoes. So I know that I wanna make some potato salad with this. I wanna make some chicken, ah, chicken salad with it. So the stuff that we're gonna have fresh, I am going to take a, just a clean cloth and I'm gonna take a handful, put that in here. I have found that if I wrap up the produce in a cloth, for some reason, it just stays fresher longer in the refrigerator. I don't know the science behind it. I don't know anything other than anecdotally, it stays fresher longer. So I'm gonna wrap that up. I'm gonna get that in one of my produce bags and then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and the rest of it I'm gonna dice up to blanch so we can use it in things like soups and stews all winter long. The, the bigger ones I am gonna cut in half. They're pretty small celery stalks, so they don't all need to be cut in half.
For blanching the celery, I just Googled the proper time for blanching and I think I did about a minute less than it said just because these celery stalks are so small. And then I'm gonna get these packaged up and we are going to vacuum seal them and I will use them this coming fall and winter. Now the celery stalks that I left out in the garden, I showed you, I kind of panned over them and I just left the end, like the root end in the ground. Celery will grow back. So I probably will be able to get one more harvest off each one of those stalks before frost. We started these celeries back together back, I want to say it was February or March. So this has been a long time coming. It is something that I look forward to and I enjoy the fruits of our labor from going from seed to harvest to in the freezer for later use. So I have one done and I will get the other one done and then I just pop these in the freezer just like this. I do like to kind of flatten them out just a little bit before I put them in the food sealer, but super easy and we have at least two if not three, because some of them, they're probably a little bit more than you would need for like chicken noodle soup. So there's probably four different recipes worth of celery there. I am going to pop these in the freezer and we can enjoy them all winter long. This is probably two servings per one because it's about, I mean, I didn't measure. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna make a soup, you'd probably use about half of this, but I didn't want to use that many bags out. When I use it, I'll pour half of it out and then repackage it up and put it back in the freezer. Let's see, I think what I'm gonna do now is make some cucumber salad that we can enjoy with dinner tonight. I just turned the oven on to 350, so as soon as the bread is ready to rise, we can bake it. And I went out and I grabbed two onions for dinner tonight. I'm going to peel my cucumber into this compost bowl. Actually, this is going to the chickens, it's not going to the compost. I've gotten a couple questions about my compost system and all it is, friend, is I've got a pile out in a wood area on my property and I go dump it in that area. It's not sophisticated at all. I should probably try to get a little bit more sophisticated so I can harvest that compost but we can only do so, so much at a time. And right now my compost is just let it go back to the earth. Nothing complicated. I think I'm gonna get one more cucumber. I don't think there's anything that smells more like summer than cucumbers and tomatoes, I guess, probably, and basil too. It smells so fresh, so clean. So for this salad, I'm gonna make a really simple dressing. That is just some sour cream. I'm gonna add some salt, pepper. The key ingredient here is dill. If I had fresh, that would be the best, but I don't. So we'll just put a pinch of dried, and then I'm gonna put some red wine vinegar. Good amount of vinegar. Mix this together. And that is gonna be our veggie side for tonight's dinner. This is really good if it sits in the refrigerator for a little bit and kind of marinates and gets nice and cold. I better get this into the fridge before I eat it all. I taste tested it and it is so good and I've been just snacking on it. So in the fridge, it goes. The bread is ready to go in the oven. When I push on it, it bounces back but it does leave a little bit of an indent and that's how you know your bread is properly proved. I have to say, I am excited for some fresh bread, but I'm a little nervous to show you what the other bread looks like. Again, the recipe said that it makes one loaf. So I 
quadrupled it because I want four loaves for my three friends and one for Josh and I. The recipe, <laughs> let me show you. This <laughs> is supposed to only make four loaves of bread. This is bigger than, I mean, this is a lot of dough. Josh is in the room. That's, that's... I followed the recipe. It said it's supposed to make four loaves. Wow. We're going to get more than four loaves of bread. So what I'm going to do, whew, it's bubbly, is punch it down. I did just clean my counters really well because we're going to roll this out on the counter because we need to use a pizza cutter on it. And I don't want to roll that on my silicone mat. And I was thinking as I was doing some other things, what am I going to do? Because I only have four loaf pans and obviously this I think is going to make more than four. I think what I'm going to do, you know what? I need to put some flour down. I think I'm out of flour. So I think instead of flour, I'm actually going to spray my counter a little bit of cooking spray. So I know I'm going to have to clean my counters really well again, again after this. I'm going to get this onto here. And I think I'm going to make one of them in a bunt pan because I think that would be really pretty because I think I'm going to have enough. I think I'm going to work with half the dough at a time. Well, you know, I mean, that's a lot of dough for one. So I've got ideas. Just follow along with me and we'll see what we come up with. I think I should probably put the dough that I'm not working with back in the refrigerator just so that it stays cold. We're just gonna work with this and see what we come up with. No major plan. We have been working all day to get to this point. We finally get to roll out our pull apart bread dough and turn it into pull apart bread. This has been one of those recipes that's kind of always been on my list that I've wanted to try, but never got around to making it. So when my friends said we were having a little get together, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to try a new recipe and give a little gift of a homemade item. And I'm also was planning on giving some peach jam away. So it worked out perfect that I decided to make the sandwich bread as well and gift that because the jam will go really well on that bread and this will just be on its own. I'm gonna take the temperature of my bread. The bread was getting a little bit warm, or not warm, too brown. So I put some foil on the top and it wasn't a temperature. You want your bread between 190 and 200 and that way you know it's done. I melted some butter for the next recipe because we're gonna need that. And we can get the bread out of the oven which is good because that means we can repurpose these bread pans. So I'm going to take them out and plop them on a drying rack. Now we're supposed to take some butter. I didn't mean for it to melt quite so much. I like it better when it's just soft, but that's okay. I pushed the button on the timer for a little too long. So we're just gonna butter this up. We're basically making cinnamon rolls, but just in a different shape. And then I already have some cinnamon sugar made, so I'm just gonna use the cinnamon sugar I made. I, I didn't measure this butter, I'm just eyeballing what looks like a, a good amount of butter. I know I have cinnamon sugar. Right here. I'm not measuring this either. I'm just eyeballing it. Now this dough is pretty sweet, so it doesn't need as much sugar just because the dough has sugar in it. Cookie or my bread pan. Now we're supposed to stack the bread on top of each other. These are not exactly even, not even close, but I think it'll work just fine. 
it ends up working just fine that they're not even but if I was to do this again which I will make this bread again because it was really relatively easy I will just cut the bread in half and then cut those halves in half so in quarters and that way they're equal in size I don't know why I didn't think of that but it worked out just fine the way it is so I'm gonna cut these into sections that are gonna fit into my tin now that we have the bread sandwich bread out of the oven we can reuse this parchment paper and the tins have cooled so we can get this pull apart bread in there this bread does need to do a second rise and this is a very soft and tender dough and so I'm just going to tilt the tin on its side so that I can stack the pieces of dough in there relatively easily and not kind of smash them together. That's beautiful. So we do have a little bit extra, but not near as much as I thought we were going to. So we might get like five of these because it took one, two, three, four. Well, I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set the leftovers aside because we are not gonna let those go to waste already rolled this one out. This is kind of a fun different way to think of a cinnamon roll. I mean it's not a cinnamon roll, it's pull apart cinnamon bread. So this was one cup of butter and I think I'm gonna put about a quarter cup in each one of these rolls, which I think the recipe said six tablespoons, so that's close enough. I, mean, I think it said a half a cup of sugar which is about what I'm doing because that's a pint. So if I use that whole thing for each one of these, then that is half a cup of sugar. So. That one was a little big probably do want to try to get them a little bit more even spacing than I did. We'll just tuck that, tuck that under. Now I am doing cut side up, I think, on all of these. There's something very satisfying about cutting this dough. This type of day is what I would consider probably a perfect type of day. We spent the majority of it in the kitchen and some good time in the garden. There is something to me very therapeutic, not only spending time outside in the garden and reaping some rewards after a months and months and months of working on planting the celery seeds and taking care of them and watching them grow and thinking they all died and then I was able to harvest some. That is super satisfying and incredible, but also working inside the kitchen, working with dough. I love working with dough. It's almost therapeutic to me, getting my hands in it and working with it and seeing something come turn out amazing from really just humble, simple ingredients. I mean, we're talking the most basic ingredients here. We've got flour, milk, butter. I guess sugar is decadent and butter is decadent and there's milk in it. So maybe they aren't the most simple, but they're humble ingredients. They're ingredients that we all have on hand at any given time in our kitchens. And it's amazing the transformation that it can go from just simple ingredients sitting in your pantry into something pretty incredible that almost anybody you know would be excited to enjoy eating. And so this is just something that I really enjoy. I love spending time in the kitchen and I love more, not only just spending time in the kitchen, but also being able to make something that I can then gift to somebody else. And hopefully they can enjoy it just as much as I would enjoy it. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm rolling both of the, the two more loaves of dough out. And instead of doing one at a time, I thought, you know what, this is gonna be a lot faster if I do two at a time. So now that I kind of got the hang of it, I kind of have done this, I think I can handle doing two at one time. And as I was doing this, I was thinking, you could get super creative when it comes to what you wanna fill this dough with. This could, tur this could turn into cinnamon rolls. This is the same dough recipe that I use when I make my cinnamon rolls at Christmas. So instead of 
cutting them into strips, stacking the strips on top of each other and cutting those into squares. Put the butter, cinnamon, sugar on there, roll it up, cut them, lay them flat in a nine by 13, and there you have cinnamon rolls. Let them rise again, and you've got a pan of cinnamon rolls. You could make a glaze and put frosting on it if you like, or getting a little more creative, I was thinking you could turn this pull apart bread. If you wanted to use this technique, you could fill it with cardamom instead of cinnamon, and they could be it could be a cardamom pull apart bread. You could use a jam instead of cinnamon sugar, and you could make it into a fruit pull apart bread like strawberry jam or peach jam or apricot jam. You could use apple butter and put some chopped up walnuts and apple butter pull apart bread. I think that when we think of recipes, especially baking, you have to follow the recipe exactly to the T. And when it comes to the dough part, that is important that you follow the recipe as best as possible. But when it comes to something like this and you're talking about the flavor components, I think you can get really creative. So I was just having fun thinking of all the different things you could, you know, change this recipe up and kind of turn it into something different just depending on what you fill it with. So here I'm kind of messing around with the different squares. Some of them wanted to lay a little bit flatter because I've been working with them and my kitchen is a little bit warm because the oven has been on for quite some time. The dough is starting to prove as I'm working with it, but that doesn't end up being a problem at all. So here is all the leftover ends and I'm just gonna turn that into something that I'm gonna bake on this baking sheet because I do not have enough loaf pans in order to make all this bread. So if you make this recipe, which I will link down below, just know that it makes more than what will fit in a loaf pan. We got basically five, almost six loaves. This I was having be one, but it's kind of proved too much and now it, it's two. So I'm gonna get this one in the oven right away. I preheated this oven as well. Oh, of course. Story of my life. I store my Dutch oven in there, so I'm always having to remove it. So we're gonna get this one in here. And now we're gonna get these ones in that oven. I almost forgot, this recipe said you're supposed to put a little bit of butter on the top. And then this recipe has a glaze that goes with it. When you're done, you take them out and you put a glaze. I have yet to decide if I'm gonna do that or not. I wanna see what they look like coming out of the oven before I do that. And then I am gonna put a piece of foil on the top because those I know got a little bit brown. I want to, just because our sugar on this, this could brown a lot easier. I don't want it to get overcooked before the inside is cooked. About 10 minutes before they're done baking, I'll take this off. One of the normal rhythms of my life is clean the kitchen just in time to make it a mess again. But I had some time at this moment while the bread was in the oven to go ahead and get the counters cleaned up and try to get as many dishes into the dishwasher as I could. So I wanted to try to take advantage of this time. Now, after I get the kitchen clean and the bread is cool, I am going to wrap all the bread up in a piece of parchment and then I'm gonna stick it in one of these gift bags. So each one of my friends is going to get a loaf of sandwich bread and a loaf of this pull apart cinnamon bread. I think this turned out beautiful. Now, like I said, the original recipe, the one that I'll link below has a glaze on the top, but I just didn't know how I was gonna be able to put a glaze on the top and be able to get it packaged up and gifted without it just becoming a huge mess. So I went ahead and I just decided to skip it. I think that the bread is sweet enough and decadent enough without having a glaze on the top. And it was so delicious. So I gifted these loaves that were in the loaf tins and then we kept the one that was baked on that cookie sheet. Once I got them in the bags, then I took some tissue paper and I went ahead and I just put the tissue paper in to decorate them and just make them a little bit more pretty and festive. And you can see there, that's some peach jam that we made together the other day. And so they're each gonna get a sandwich bread, a pull apart bread and some peach jam. So I just think this is super fun, really affordable way to kind of 
give, I think, a beautiful gift of homemade. And not only hopefully are they going to enjoy it, but I also enjoyed the whole process of making it. So it's kind of a win-win-win, I think. So friend, thank you so much for being here as we were able to spend time in the kitchen and some time in the garden. I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. I can pop some other videos here you can watch between now and my next upload. I hope you are having a great day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.